Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just review how far image tag has come on the web. What all you can do with it so far today in today's time in terms of optimization and how to make your web pages more responsive, lighter and faster. So this is a good blog from Adi Osmani from Google. I think he works in Google and it includes a lot of information around what exactly goes into an image tag today how you can improve the performance what all metrics can be impacted by just using images properly so let's just take out some time and discuss all of these in this video which is explanation of this blog in general if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow so let's start with the core web vitals impact which we have discussed in past what core web vitals are you can check out that video if you want to dive deep into it but for now we'll start from cumulative layout shift as a core web vital or cls cls basically is a metric i'm not sure if you have ever observed but if you go to some websites you will see by the time the website fully loads the layout actually shifts a lot of times i mean suddenly the images pop in advertisements pop in the main menu gets a little down or a little up depending on wherever things are and so on so the quantified number which gives us a representation of how bad this layout shift is that metric is known as cumulative layout shift or cls number right so ideally you want your cls to be zero that means when you open a page nothing should shift you know once it is painted on the screen because if it shifts then it confuses the users and that's bad for user experience so images are the biggest culprit of having a large cls because html allows you to specify images without dimensions right so if you do something like this if you just do imgsrc keyboard.jpg then browser have will have no problem but it has to download this image first and then see the width and the height of the image and then draw it on the page and if you do it like this it will start with width zero height zero and the moment it downloads the image first then it will see that hey i need a 400 cross 300 space on the screen therefore i'll just push everything else down so you don't want that and to avoid that what you have to do is specify a width and a height attribute on images now this is not new this is this has existed since a long time from html1 i think itself so that's not new but well, that's new in the sense that now we have these core web vitals you almost always have to specify a width and a height to image tags in order to avoid cls right and it's good practice to do so as well the next core web vital which we can optimize is lcp which is known as largest contentful paint with images themselves now what does lcp mean it just means the largest part largest singular part on a screen right in this case for example they showed you an example of stack overflow of blog the largest lcp is this image over here which includes a large amount of a sizable chunk of the screen right so if your largest contentful paint element paints slow then that means that the user would see it slow and that means for the most part user probably would be staring at a blank space or a blank spot which actually is a sizable part of your page so that's also a bad user experience and lcp is also a metric which you can optimize for so there are a bunch of ways you can optimize lcp as a metric because well if you are serving an image that has to be served anyway right so you cannot just remove that image or compress it or you know just to compress the size and so on you cannot do that but what you can do is load this image a bit faster and the way this could work is first of all let's stick with the responsive images that means if i'm browsing it from a smaller screen a smaller device i don't need to load the full hd preview of the image right so if i'm browsing this from phone i might need a smaller image if i'm browsing it from desktop i might need a bigger image and so on so that definitely would improve your lcp in mobile devices at least and small tablets and so on and for desktops it will still be the same problem so one thing at a time then of course you also have if you want to go one step ahead into the optimization part you can also design the images or you know design the src sets based on the pixel density which you can see over here by density right here 
so your device your browser your user's browser would automatically select a image based on what the pixel density is for example in a in case of apple which it calls as retina displays uh, pixel density is much more than your traditional displays so that way it will automatically pick up the correct resolution and if it is not a retina display or a high density pixel device then automatically it will fall back to a lighter version of the image finally there is also a way of specifying much newer formats of images because you know these new formats webp and avif these formats are actually much more efficient in terms of size and the quality which they can deliver compared to standard jpeg and pngs so this is one way of putting out you know information for the browser that hey if you support avif just go ahead and use that if you support webp use that if you support jpeg then use only that and if you don't support anything just you know this is like the fallback kind of thing for it so in general i do believe the two biggest changes which can help you a lot in terms of image optimization is actually choosing a nice modern format of the image to deliver and second thing is the correct dimensions of the image to deliver only these two changes can drastically bring down the sizes of images you serve on your website which would have an immediate impact on your loading times your user experience and so on then we have a request your image early hack where you actually use a preload tag to load your images early which just basically means that hey whenever your website whenever your browser starts downloading the html of your website for the very first time it can see this preload tag and it can parallelly start that waterfall thing which we also discussed i think a couple of videos ago so your images would start downloading parallelly even if you know that they exist maybe you know a page down the line or maybe a javascript bundle downloading down the line so you can preload these images you can tell the browser to load them as soon as you want in a way then finally you can also take a look at placeholders in today's image times which is you know in, in the modern image tag you can specify some css which can give you a little bit of placeholder thing to work with and in most cases obviously even if you're specifying this as an image this technically should not be an image well then because you'll obviously run in a problem where you have to get a placeholder image to download this image also so this image usually is a base 64 encoded or you know an svg kind of format or maybe even png a jpeg format of data base 64 string which is immediately available as a as a result right so yeah i mean you can have a little blurry or a little less quality image used as a placeholder for that particular image which you're loading and that obviously would result in a much better user experience compared to just staring at a blank white square there are websites like blur hash for example i think blur hash is also something which Vercel next.js recommends so you can basically just upload an image you get a little string and that gives you the ability to have this little base 64 or you know little this data based base 64 string basically of the image not an actual image and uh, use it immediately as a placeholder so this is actually very interesting you should check it out if you are doing a lot of images work on your home page and so on because that can improve a lot of user experience the next core web vital which we have to optimize which we can optimize with images is the first input delay now what this means is that how soon can a user start interacting with your page right so user lands on the website they want to scroll they want to click buttons they want to navigate to pages and so on but that cannot happen unfortunately if a lot of javascript is being loaded or being executed parallelly because you just have a single ui thread on the web and that ui thread is shared with dom with the javascript which is running on with the images being downloaded with all all sorts of stuff right which is happening on the page so you can delay loading images by using image lazy loading which is just a single attribute you just specify loading lazy and all this would do is that defer the loading of the image even downloading of this image until and unless the user actually reaches a certain point on the screen where they are about to see the image so let's say you have a thousand images being loaded but they are below the viewport maybe the user never even scrolls down on your website so what is the point of loading all those images right therefore you can use this loading lazy as the attribute to actually make sure that you don't load anything which is not visible to the user anyway because that's just a waste of cpu and bandwidth so that's how you can make loading lazy work with modern images so yep that's pretty much it that's a lot of things which 
the image tag has now got coming from you know the time where you would only have img src alt width and height we have come a long way with html5 and beyond where we now can selectively import or use images we have loading strategies we have ways to have background images or blurry images for placeholders as placeholders for images we have multiple image formats which we can support it's it's a good time to be a web developer and being working in a space where you are obsessed about user experience and user performance because finally for the longest time now we have a good amount of users who have decent internet connection but we also have tools and techniques from the web itself which allow us to not just compromise on the user experience for the ones which are using high-end devices but also for the ones which are not using so high-end devices and performance matters to them also so this is a great time to be a good front-end developer who understands users who understands user experience who understands speed and these core web vitals and core metrics and optimize your websites against them because a lot of people still work and live on slow internet it's not that everyone has 100 megabytes of internet connections at their home therefore it's our responsibility as web developers to make sure that these people also have the best experience when they are on our websites image tag is one of those tags which is the important the most important thing the most important element of the web i believe in a way so you better optimize it for your websites if you want to have a good user experience that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching